Event mapping is one of the uh, one of the big three, and uh, I, I don't. I saw Matthew Havisto on. I don't know if we're expanding the big three to the big four now that we've got. Uh, um, now, now that we have the the new um, configuration based uh, tool for app engines, but uh, the big three of um, how to isolate customizations of uh, page and field configurator, event mapping, and drop zones. So we already went through drop zones. Sorry, I didn't update this. This isn't actually drop zones. We're talking about event mapping. But uh, here are our other 15-minute segments that are coming up. We're here in event mapping. We'll be talking about onboarding, uh, forms and e-forms in a flash, and uh, and delivered PS92 tools to build electronic forms coming up today or tomorrow. So just quick hit on event mapping. What is it? It's a tool to add custom code to delivered components, pages, records, fields without modifying the, the delivered objects. And of course, the reason to do this is you want to end up not having your, your custom behavior impacted by upgrades. If you can encapsulate your custom behavior in configuration-based settings, then overriding those objects won't, won't uh, override your, your custom behavior. So event mapping is, uh, is the uh, way to add custom code. The skill set that you need for event mapping is technical. This is an app designer based uh, configuration plus uh, PIA. So you will be developing application class people code and you need to know the portal registry navigation for your target component. Uh, it's available starting in People Tools 855, so it's been around a while. And uh, here is just a quick run through of how you're going to apply event mapping. You're going to write some application class people code that you want to take place in the uh, event flow for a delivered component. You're going to define a related content service to host that. You're going to find the portal registry navigation for your target component. And you're going to create an event map that ties your related content service that is defining your or enabling your application class people code. And you're going to tie that to a component level people code event on your target component. Um, this is uh, the stub that you want to start your app class with. So, and you can, you're welcome to, uh, it will make these, um, uh, make the PowerPoints available. You're welcome to just grab that code and use it as your, as your stub, or you, you'll find that in Oracle's documentation. So here's a quick walkthrough of event mapping. We're going to start here in App Designer and create a new application package. And add a class. And then paste in uh, a uh, paste in our stub code. This code is going to set the value of one field based on the uh, selected values of another field. So I'm going to update my, my naming here. I've already uh, pre-written my code here. I'll uh, pause on that for just a minute. So you can see I'm, I'm testing the value of grade and then based on the value of grade or the range of the grade field, I'm populating an annual review level field value. So now for the PS steps. The first one is to drill in to our related content under people tools and then portal and related content service. We're going to define a related content service and add a new value. 
Here we give this whatever name we like. And then in the related content service, after we uh, insert a service name, we're going to change the URL type to application class. That'll give us new lookups here. We're going to choose our app package that we defined in App Designer. Enter a qualified path, in this case, just a colon, and the name of our class. And that will pretty much take care of us. We'll save that. And uh, now at this point here, I'm going into the target component that I'm updating here. I'm going to add some behavior to the fluid position manage, manage positions application in HCM. So in order to figure out my portal registry, I'm first going to navigate to where I want the behavior to take place. And then I'm going to hit Control Shift J and grab the component name there. The next step is I'm going to navigate to Enterprise Components and to this Find Object Navigation, which is an awesome tool to help me figure out the portal registry. I put in my component and hit Search. And then I can see the navigation structure that I'm going to be uh, that I'm going to be navigating to. I want to take careful note of that because it's easy for it to get confusing. So I'm going to copy that, stick that someplace where I can remember it. And now I'm heading back in to People Tools and Portal back to related content service, and now to manage related content service. So this is the place where we need to define an event map uh, and, and tie together our related content service that we already defined with the people code event where we want that code to fire. So I'm going to go to event mapping and map application class to existing components. Here, you're going to be selecting a content reference. It's very important to include hidden CREFs. In this case, our target CREF is a fluid component, and so it is hidden. Uh, if I'm not, I'm not going to be find it, not going to find it unless I hit that. So then, I'm going to follow in the structure that I just found in the previous step. I'm going to be careful to choose exactly the right name there. If I pick manage position. I would be wrong. Now here, I'm going to be mapping this to a component record field level uh, event. So you only have component events to work with. Uh, so you, you can either do a, a, a page level event or, I'm sorry, you do have page level events. But if you want to be on a record, it's really the component record event that, that that's going to happen on. One thing to be aware of is that these lists will be either overly restrictive or overly permissive. There will either be not enough values in them or there will be too many. You prefer to have too many because you want to be able to find what you're looking for. But it is possible to set up an event map on a field that isn't actually on that component. And then, of course, it won't work. So we're going to start here with the uh, restricted prompt and the field that I'm looking for isn't there. So I'm going to hit unrestricted prompt and look up again. Now I've got many more, including some fields that may not actually be on this target component. I'm going to select my grade field and then go look up the service ID that I created that I named POSIN data X2. And now with that set, I can set a sequence number and I can choose between pre-process and post-process, as in do I want this to run before any uh, code that's already there or after any code that's already there. I'm going to choose post-process so Oracle, any Oracle delivered code gets it safe first and then I will alter uh, things after that.
Okay, now I can save and I'm done, right? No, I'm not done. I have to remember to come up to, uh, wait, wait, let's see, oh, sorry. Yes, I am done, sorry. Forgot, skipped a field. I, or I'm crossing my, uh, crossing my streams. So we've now associated our code with this event. I can go back in and now when I change the grade value here, Here's my annual review level field. When I change the grade, the, uh, the value for the annual review level will automatically change. And the magic of event mapping is that I did that without changing any of the, uh, without changing any delivered objects. So if I were to go and look under the grade on the grade record, there's no code there that I've altered and uh, and when I when it comes time to do an upgrade, I can overwrite the record that grade is on, and it's not going to do away with my customization. Okay, so uh, just to wrap things up, the uh, the things to remember, um, the uh, you do have an indicator in in App Designer that shows whether a component has event mappings associated with it. That's important because and you always want to make sure that you document like crazy because if you only do event mapping in one place, uh, it's probably the last place a next, an, another developer is going to look to try to figure out what's happening. So again, you, you, it's hard to find the event mapping in App Designer. So you want to make sure you document very well and preferably do this as part of an overall initiative to isolate your customizations rather than a one-off solution. Um, you also want to be careful about the portal registry navigation. Make sure you're using the correct one or you'll get it all set up and it just won't work. Also, you want to remember that, uh, that you could have the same component set up in multiple portal registries. If so, you need to do your event mapping on all of those portal registries or else it'll only work on the one that your user is actually navigating to. And then we've included some reference links from uh, Oracle on setting up event mapping. And, oh, I'm one minute over, but uh, I don't think we have a back-to-back -back here, Scott. So we do have time for answers or for a question and answer for anyone that wishes to stay. You bet. Do we have, you're welcome to either come off mute for uh, to ask us a question or to uh, post something in the chat. And since you can come off mute, you're welcome to turn this into a, just a party room. If you wanna say hi to anybody, that's also a, also a possibility. Hi, Paul. Hey, Scott. Looks like we're in the same room. I don't know why I can't see you. I know. So, uh, must be on the other side of the partition. This is uh, this is the GT, the fancy GT parking garage we're in, right? I wonder <laughs> when they're going to let us in the building. Thank you, Alan. I do like that. That's my favorite family pick. <laughs> but I will uh, actually stop the share since uh, it should make it easier for everyone to to see each other. And uh, let's see, can event mapping code be located using people code trace? That is a great question. Um, I believe that if you do a full people code trace, it will trace into the event mapping code. I have not done that personally, uh, Narayan, so uh, um, you would need to test that out for sure. Or uh, uh, if Matthew's still here, he's welcome to jump on and and say yes, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to uh, it's it's going to trace its way into that code, and you'll be able to see the location from there. So that's a, a great question and a good way to figure out what's actually happening if you don't know that it's happening in event mapping. Um, in event mapping, is it possible to call a function from another field formula function? Yes, you can call functions. You can call other methods. Um, what you uh, what you can't do is actually trigger, um, 
it, what where you may have a challenge is if the behavior you want to change is in the middle of delivered people code, you can't really replace the delivered people code. So that people code is going to run. You either have to uh, have to fix what it did that you don't like at the end or, uh, or preempt it at the beginning. It's actually hard to keep it. You can't really keep the existing code from running. All you can do is clean up after, after it if you want different behavior than what it's doing. I think that the event mapping button actually, or uh, the event mapping indicator becomes available or became available in 857. And uh, here is a reference to it on the um, People Tools blog. This is a Matthew Havisto blog entry. And that is where it is. So you, on that button bar, um, let's see if I can uh, make that a little bigger for you. So on the button bar in App Designer, you can uh, you can see by that little uh, that little icon there that there is event mapping, and then this will display what configured event maps there are for that uh, component. And I believe that displays when you click on that component. Okay. Well, with that, I think I am going to uh, to shut her down. So thanks everybody for coming.